The railways of Britain, in their prime, are the most powerful railways on earth. And these railways are the power behind the docks and industries that make up Great Britain. These are the tales of the Big Four. This year, we'd have two more express engines arrive at the railway to run a new prestigious train that we'd have on the railway from Denway to Blackmore Central. It was also to be scheduled to run once a week for the summer months due to the increase of holidaymakers travelling to the seaside and further afield. So this is the story I told. Hey brother, how are things? Things are going alright. I'm just sorting out who will take the summer trains that I've got scheduled soon. How's the museum going by the way? The museum's going well, but where's this special train heading? There'll be two trains, starting at opposite ends. One at Blackmore and one here. So they'll pass each other on the way. Splendid! I know both the engines you choose for the special trains will do an excellent job. What on earth was that? Oh. That was Henry. Must be passing by with the post train for Morton Heath. It'll be split up and taken up the line by Reuben once he arrives at Morton Heath. Henry's going all the way to Blackmore to drop off the mail at the depot. Well, he was certainly travelling at some pace for the windows to vibrate a little like that. He best be careful, though. I'm sure he's sticking to the speed limit, even if he is going a little fast for the station limits. Looks like he's running a little late. I'll be sure to speak to him later about the hold-up. As the two brothers were talking when the two new engines arrived into the station, they uncoupled from the train and came over to the sheds, where some of the other engines were getting fired up by their crews for the day's work. Well, I'll be. You're all from opposing companies. I don't want to be sharing my shed with my rivals. This is all wrong. Are you sure that they're our rivals, Arthur? They all seem pretty friendly to me. It doesn't bother me that they're from the other companies. We're not rivals just because you have Southern on your tender. It doesn't mean we're against you. We're all here to work together. Really? Are you sure about that? Yes, we all work together just fine. No matter what company logo we have on our bunkers or tenders, things are a bit different around here. I was like that when I first arrived, to, but got used to it. I just thought I'd never see the day at all. Surely you can't be serious. Where I last worked, there were other Southern Railway engines, and the occasional LNER and LMS locos, with the trains coming in and out of London too. We are serious. It's the way Mr. Todd runs this railway. It's been that way for ages. You'll get used to it. Exactly you two. Arthur? 
If you don't like it, you can stay at the museum sheds or Axminster if you'd rather be all by yourself. Arthur, Merlin and Charles, this week I'd like the three of you to trial a couple of new trains. They're going to run from Broughton to Blackmore and back. One train starting at either station. The two trains will pass each other at certain times. It has been requested by the Railway Society and some of the general public. Two of the engines who have the best time and overall best average time for the run, it will be voted by myself, my brother and the railway board. The other engine who doesn't get a vote will stay on regular express work with Henry. I know that I probably haven't got a chance in winning this trial, but can I still try though, sir? Yes, Henry, if you'd like to. Why? He's smaller than the rest of us. He'll be sure to make the train late. GNRC ones are quite fast, even for today. But we both know bigger engines like ourselves are much faster. It's still fair to give him a chance. He proved how fast he can be when he first arrived by getting the train here from Broughton with five minutes to spare. That is impressive for someone his size. Alright, fair enough. But if he wins, you get a choice of the runners up. That's fair. I hope I'll get one of the trains. I'd love to run up and down the line with a passenger train. Yes, that's fine. I'll choose who did second best, then they'll get the train over me. I'd much rather take the regular express. Don't get your hopes up, Merlin. Though, Henry, I'm sure you'll do just fine. The four engines were sitting outside the shed in the morning sun, discussing the trial and who'd think would win over all. The engines crews oiled them up and made sure they were ready for the day. Right lads, let's take bets. Who do you reckon will win? Whoever loses has to take a freight train from Rottingham all the way to here. <laughs> I'll bet first, and I reckon Charles will win. Statistically, Charles is faster, with a top speed of 100 miles an hour. Whereas Merlin and Arthur are 90 miles an hour. So, he may have that advantage there. But it's about getting away from the stations that may give either competition the edge. I mean, if City of Truro did 102 miles per hour in 1904, and statistically, a freeze can do 108 miles an hour, Charles has the best odds of winning this competition, but I could be wrong. It's not top speed, but getting out of the station is key. If there was a way for an engine to gain the ability to punch, I would love to have it, so I could punch you so hard into next week. I'm only stating the facts, you idiot. Oh, will you two stop being so specific? You know full well the two of them aren't allowed to go over the speed limit unless an emergency. If anything, they'll be allowed to travel up to 90 miles per hour, as that's the speed these rails can withstand. I'm sure all the prices in the UK can allow faster. But, I don't know as I haven't been there. True. But have you considered the possibility of aerodynamics? Wow! You cracked the case! If only you had realised that Charles hasn't the slightest bit of streamlining or smoke deflectors, you muppet! Aha! That is where you're wrong! Because Charles is slightly more aerodynamic than Arthur and Merlin because of his shape even though he doesn't have smoke deflectors or anything unlike those two. Plus, with his speed, he has a higher chance of winning. What do you think of that? Uh, why do I even bother with you two sometimes? Enough? Later that afternoon, the trial commenced. Charles would go first, leaving on the hour, getting into Blackmore Station in a record time, arriving back into Denway at 6pm. Arthur was first back, then Merlin, followed by Charles and Henry.
Congrats, Arthur and Merlin. You two won the trial. Your times were very close with Charles's, only a few hundreds of a second between them. So we've talked about how efficient both of you were getting out of the stations, smoothly yet quickly. Charles, you also did very well. Are you fine with just taking the express? Yes, that's fine with me. I don't mind staying on express duties with Henry. Me too. We need to see how long the run is going to take. Then if it does, well, Mr. Time might have. Us both running the trains back and forth from here to Blackmore. Charles was already on his way to Blackmore Station with the express. When disaster struck for Arthur, running out of water on the hill up to the seawall banking sidings. The signalman from the nearest signal box ran up to see what the problem was. What's happened here then, driver? Well, Arthur's run out of water. Oh, we need no engine to come help us to the next station. We've got, we've stopped on the hill up to Blackmore. I see. Well, I'll check to see if any engine's available before the next train. I don't think Charles is due out yet. Meanwhile, back on the hill, not far from Greenvale, the passengers on board Arthur's train were getting angry about stopping in the middle of nowhere. Mr. Todd and his brother, who were also on the train for the first run, got out to walk up to Arthur to talk to him. Oh, Arthur, how could you forget on taking on water before you left this morning? When another engine comes along, be sure to take on water at Blackmore. I believe Charles or Merlin will come to help you. The other engines aren't able to help due to the increased workload. Oh, Arthur, how could you forget on taking on water before you left this morning? When another engine comes along, be sure to take on water at Blackmore. I believe Charles or Merlin will come to help you. The other engines aren't able to help due to the increased workload. Shortly, Merlin flashed by down the hill, heading back to Denway. After he passes, Charles arrived to help Arthur onwards to Blackmore to allow him to fill up on water. What's happened? Out of water are we, Arthur? Yes, he has. Mind taking us to Blackmore, Charles? Certainly, sir. Soon, Charles switched tracks to couple up to Arthur and pulled him up the hill. Once they reached Blackmore, the passengers thanked Charles for his help. When Arthur was uncoupled, he was shunted to the water tower by Charles. Arthur felt embarrassed, but thanked him regardless. take a while for Arthur to be filled up since he drained his tank and it's not a small water tank he may also need to be checked over to see if he does have leaky water tanks so can you take the train and make up for lost time Charles oh yes sir I definitely can I wasn't built for slow trains as for you Arthur after you've been filled up I'll get Merlin to come get you later on if your water tanks are leaking Best get them repaired when you get back to Denway later on this evening. It will only be a quick repair, but it should hold to your maintenance in a few months. 
Yes, sir. Back at Denway, Charles arrived back with the train in record time. The passengers sang his praises for such a smooth run and commended Mr. Todd for his train, suggesting they should go ahead. After that, Charles backed into the sheds. Tired but happy, the train was a success, even if he wasn't the one supposed to take it. Well, congrats, Charles. That's amazing that the train is a green light. Uh, but where's Arthur? Wasn't he taking the train this afternoon? He ran out of water on the hill running up to Blackmore Station. Silly bugger didn't bother to take on any more before he left. So I think Merlin has been sent to collect him. Best if you guys don't embarrass him, though. He won't appreciate it. Besides, it could have happened to any engine. Tell him about his leaky tank. For sure they would. I know what it's like to be pranked by those two pranksters. One by one, the other engines arrived back sitting in the evening sun after a hard day's work. Finally, Herbert, Merlin and Arthur arrived back. I'm back with Arthur. I had to go back for him after you took the train onwards. There you are. You best get that water tank looked at, though. Wouldn't want it happening again, now that the train is a go-ahead from now on. Mr. Todd did ask me if I wanted to help with it occasionally to give you a break, but I declined, because Merlin was here instead. It would look better if you two N2- It would look better if you two N15 took the two trains instead of me. Yeah, I agree, Charles. Us two on Southern coaches would look great. I wouldn't mind help from Merlin. Also gives me a chance to take regular express trains on occasions, too. And thanks again for coming to help me when I stopped by the Seawell. I almost risked the chance of the train's success. Oh, don't be too hard on yourself. You did great besides that incident. It could have happened to any engine. You're lucky it had been the engine to pull one of the trains on their maiden voyage. That's true. And eh, maybe Mr. Todd will allow you to pull it too, so I guess it's a win-win for the both of us. Yes, you two, if that's okay. And I'll look into getting two rakes of southern coaches. It may take a few weeks to come, but I'll get William to collect them all for you. <laughs> yeah. It's good to have another two engines to lend a buffer with the train. I didn't care about pulling the train, but I am glad the train went great. You've both did splendidly today. You know, maybe I could take the express some day. <laughs> you know you can't, Jackson. You're too slow to pull it. <laughs> can dream, Henry. Yes, you can. It's like I never even think about taking a goods train unless it was essential for me to do so. We each have our specialties. That's true, Jackson. But really let the engines built for faster trains. I know for sure the length of your trains. I doubt we'd manage with that. Though our other brothers and sisters, the S-15s were built for freight. The only difference with them is that they don't have smoke deflectors like us. I've pulled a passenger train before. When? I don't ever recall you doing it here, so it must be nonsense. Aye. That's not nonsense. On my old railway I did, thank you very much. Oh yeah? How fast did you go? I went a solid 50 miles per hour. <laughs> Both please. I bet that was while you were going downhill. <laughs> it wasn't downhill. I did it on the level. It was a long stretch of track. Okay then. 
Prove that you can take ten coaches from the yard tomorrow morning and get to fifty before we get to Broughton. The coaches are needed there anyways. Oh, we're doing some more bets? I'm betting my goods run William can't do it. I like that offer. I'll bet he can. In that case, challenge accepted. <laughs> I guess we shall see in the morning. Hmm. I guess we will. As night rolls in, the engines all gradually fall asleep. All that can be heard is cars in the distance. When dawn came over the sheds, William was ready and raring to win the bet. Alright, so when's my train? Ease your pistons. It's hours before any trains are due. Reuben is getting them for you. If you just want to sit in the station for now, he'll couple them up to you. Alright. Thanks, Henry. William waited at the station for Reuben to get his coaches. He was very excited to prove to Henry he could win the bet. <laughs> William waited at the station for Reuben to get his coaches. He was very excited to prove to Henry he could win the bet. Do you have my coaches yet, Rube? Yeah, here they are now. You're ready to go. And almost like magic, William pulled the train easily out of the station. He flashed by stations and soon arrived at Broughton Parkway, hitting the 50 miles per hour he said he could do. What the? Four-wheeled coaches? Oh, that Henry. That's why it was easy. I didn't think it would be that easy to get to 50 miles an hour. If I had bigger coaches, it might have been more of a struggle. Ugh. Once he stopped at Broughton, he was just running around his train when he realised Carlisle was also there, who just arrived a few minutes after William. Surely you would have noticed that the train was a lot lighter? No, not really. I was too busy concentrating on getting to 50, rather than what I was pulling. 
I'm used to longer flight trains, so I thought nothing of it. Ugh, anyways, I'm gonna leave these here, and I best head back to Denway. Got to pick up freight from Morton Heath, bound for the docks. Okay, see you later, William. I'll be back not long after you. Robin, do you really think it's funny to give me some smaller coaches instead of the normal bogey ones? I did get to the speed you bet on. I guess that means I win and you have to do the forfeit. It wasn't just me. Charles was involved with this prank. Wait till Mr. Todd finds out. He won't be happy. What on earth is going on here? Earlier, I was talking about pulling passenger trains in the past. Charles and Reuben here didn't believe me that I had, so they bet me that I could get to 50 miles per hour towards Broughton and Parkway with empties, as they needed transferring there. So instead, they gave me four-wheeled coaches as a prank. I didn't know it had to be bogey coaches, sir. The yard foreman said it was four-wheeled coaches, not the regular bogey coaches. Is that so? I'll have a word with him later on. Why would Reuben give William the four-wheel coaches, rather than bogey coaches? You know that not many people can fit in the smaller coaches. They're not meant for higher speeds. It's the same for engines. Take me, for instance. Uh, my wheels are a lot smaller than Charles here. Yeah, so we're designed to pull freight at slower speeds. Charles has more wheels and is bigger, so he's more capable of traveling at faster speeds for longer distances than us along with the larger coal and water capacity. Yeah, yeah, okay. No need to get your buffers in a twist. Enough of all this, you three. It's not a competition. It wasn't right of Reuben to give you smaller coaches. This will mean you'll have to take an extra trip, or I'll get another engine to take the remaining passengers to the other stations. If that's not doable, I'll get the buses to get them instead. I'm sure you don't want to resort to having to get the bus company to take them. Which would mean we could lose some valuable paying passengers. You're correct, Charles. So in future engines, please don't prank each other or take bets on speeds. You all have your own specialties and were built for certain tasks. Please, in future, just do what I've given you. Anyway, I'm going back to my house for the night. See you all tomorrow. And with that, Mr. Todd wandered back to his office in the station before going home, while the engines chattered away. I was glad to have another two express engines to help out with the new summer train. Though next year, I'd look into getting two of my older engines back to the railway for the museum. But that's a story for another day.